the desk of the incident commander, brought to you by SecureWorks. Hi, my name is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Kevin Walsh, Senior Consultant, Cybersecurity and IT Security for SecureWorks. Kevin, pleasure to be with you here today. Thanks, happy to be here. Excellent. So Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background and how you arrived to what you're doing today? Sure. So I've been with SecureWorks uh, for three years now as an incident commander. And, and prior to that, I worked for the United States Secret Service for 23 and a half years. And, and most people only think of the Secret Service as protecting the president, but they really have an integrated mission of investigations and protection. And I actually started my career in the New York field office conducting investigations as well as protection. Uh, I then transferred down to Washington, D.C., where I spent almost nine years in total uh, assigned to the Presidential Protective Division for those years as supervisor on President Bush and President Obama's detail. And then the last seven, I was in the Atlanta field office where I led the Electronic Crimes Task Force. And the focus there was on ransomware, business email compromise, unauthorized access, as well as other electronic crimes. So Kevin, based on the experience that you described, it's an easy segue into cybersecurity. Can you highlight some of the areas from your past and your experience that actually translate well into the cybersecurity field? Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of similarities when it comes to protecting the President of the United States and protecting your organization. Um, both involve protecting high-level targets and require a great amount of planning and tactical responses to keep your assets safe. And I, I think that's why SecureWorks was a perfect fit for me. Uh, SecureWorks is 100% fo focused on cybersecurity. In, in fact, it's all we do. And Another aspect was the threat intelligence because SecureWorks built a security analytics platform based on 20 years of real world threat intelligence collected. And I can speak from experience that threat intelligence is so important to successful protection and your ability to respond to threats. It it's important to remember in cybersecurity, as it is in protection, that, that you can't stop everything, but you can have a plan to react and respond to threats and attacks. And, and I think my prior career planning training for the worst day really helps organizations respond to their worst day. And I take that mindset into the role of the incident commander and use it in cyber incidents to help organizations recover as quickly as possible. Well, that segues us into the next question. If you could please describe to our audience in, in a greater detail what the role is and what you actually do within an organization as that commander. You know, in order to understand what an incident commander actually is, I, I think it's really important to paint a picture of what the scene is during a cyber incident. I, I'm talking about right after you get that call on a Friday night or a Saturday morning where, where you find out all your systems are down and you realize this is not going to be a good day. Yeah. The, the amount of chaos you're about to experience and the overall impact to your business is hard to put into words from the operational impact to the financial impact impact to your customers and the C-suite and executives, your employees, all of this grows exponentially when your business has been the victim of a cyber incident. The role of the incident commander is to really help manage this chaos and keep everybody focused on the task at hand to ensure your organization recovers as quickly as possible. Well, that's a definitely a great rundown. I think that's talking about a level of being proactive within your cybersecurity strategy, not just reactive. And I'd like to go back a little into the security space where in the past, when we talked about uh, different types of attacks, what do we do when it happens? And now we understand it's not if it happens, it's when it happens. And being proactive in your cyber posture is critical. And the role to be defined by the incident commander is critical from what you're saying, because you also have to make sure that the ship runs smoothly. And everybody knows what their roles are, who they report to, and how it runs in a very uh, streamlined way. And maybe you could give us a little bit of a colorful story of an incident that might have occurred where you had to step in and really pull together an organization in such a crazy situation that really unfolds so quickly and everybody's left in chaos. Yeah, I, I think it's important to know when you think about it, what the incident commander really does, or talk about that is, is really put a plan together that, that does some key things, you know, contains the threat actor, evicts the threat actor, determines the scope of the activity within your environment, understands what the threat actor did or access and, and help you recover critical business operations as quickly as possible. And I, I know this may sound simple, but there's so much that goes into this process. And, and the reason is because there are so many work streams going on simultaneously during a cyber incident that an organized response is essential for a safe and speedy recovery. 
And most importantly, do it in a very secure manner. And I mention it in a secure manner because the pressure to restore operations as quickly as possible are always a top priority for businesses. And, and while speed is important, without an organized response, you're incredibly vulnerable to additional attacks. And, and one incident's hard enough to, to deal with. You certainly don't want to deal with two back to back or simultaneously for that matter. Oh, certainly. And probably when an organization is setting up as proper, let's call it cyber culture, cyber hygiene, proactive, reactive cyber uh, standpoint within an the organization, they really have to know what their steps are within the organization that pertains to them. There's no one size fits all. How does the organization run? How do the people actually manifest themselves within the organization to run smoothly? Who reports to who? But also are certain groups incentivized together, whether being the CISO and the COO to make sure security and operations are running both in, in tandem. So when you're talking about so many moving parts within an organization, here comes a big cyber incident, in comes an incident response commander, and now we're going to see the importance of an incident commander. And if you could highlight the importance of it, and how does an incident commander make sure that something is not overlooked when such a cyber incident occurs? You know, I, I think a good way to think of an incident commander is really kind of a conductor of an orchestra. That's right. um, you, you know, it's not productive or harmonious to have every instrument playing at the same time. And as you mentioned, there's so much going on. It has to be a coordinated effort. And, and the incident commander really is that conductor. You know, the, yeah. the incident commander will keep an organization on track and focused on the most important aspects of the investigation and the recovery. And, and in addition, the incident commander is going to provide you with insight and information that's going to help you make the best business decisions as you go through the investigation and the recovery process. And I can't stress enough how important it is to prioritize the task and, and keep everybody a focus to call uh, to avoid chasing what I call the shiny objects, which, mm -hmm. which can really hinder and slow down an investigation and recovery. And, and without clear direction, and we see this happen all the time, the investigation and recovery process are, are really impacting those situations. Certainly. So let's break it down for our audience here. In comes incident commander. What do you do? What is your role? How do you break it down? You've highlighted certain aspects of it that are critical. And just for them to understand just the breakdown and what really happens step by step, can you shine some light on that for us? Sure. As I said, what the incident commander is going to do is really help prioritize those tasks, keep everybody focused on the task at hand, but to understand that there's so many different work streams in an incident. And really what the incident commander is going to do is allow you to work on those work streams simultaneously. Now, obviously we need to prioritize the task and that doesn't mean things aren't continuing on. It's actually quite the opposite. As I said, it's kind of like a conductor of an orchestra that really helps the business prioritize their impacted resources, prior, get their priorities straight, and the incident commander lays out that plan to help the business recover as quickly as possible. So you've dealt with a lot of organizations. Are there any specific areas that you find organizations continuously overlook and you come in there and you're like, I can't believe they're overlooking this. And it keeps happening. And it's just something that you want to highlight to organizations. Look, you really need to tighten up on this. This is critical for you. Yeah, there's so many different things and, and I don't want to call them small things, but I just want to talk about when we come into an incident that that, that also yeah. things that need to be addressed or overlooked right away. You know, we can talk about preparation and it's so important, but just as you come into an incident, there's certain things that people don't even consider. Here's an example. One of the first things we do as an incident commander is to ensure you have a secure means to communicate. I mean, you have to ask yourself, have you established a secondary means to communicate during a cyber incident? You have to be prepared for your primary means being compromised or not accessible because you have to remember in an incident that a threat actor may have had access to your environment for quite some time, which means they may have compromised your communication. And until you determine the extent of the attack, you really should operate on this assumption. And, and the key part of this is like a secondary means of communication, you know, and, and the part of that is to make sure it's secured by at least MFA. If yeah. not, you run the risk of a threat actor being able to intercept your communications and, and this can be dangerous. You have to remember, knowledge is power. And the quest for knowledge, especially at the beginning of an incident, is tremendous. And you don't want the threat actor uh, intercepting any of that information because that's a recipe for disaster. 
Certainly. And you can imagine with a big cyber incident and certainly even before a cyber incident, people are moving at rapid speed. People are multitasking. People are working remote. They're working from home. They're working everywhere, but they're just trying to get their job done and pulled in many different areas. So sometimes it's like, well, you know, I'm just going to communicate this way because it's quicker just this one time. Or, you know what, I'll just send it this way just this one time. How important it is for organizations to really topple off their cyber hygiene and really make the organization in terms of education communication, communication, awareness, global awareness within the organization as a proactive measure for the organizations to really function in a cyber hygienic way. It's so important. I I mean, the proactive side, that just ties back to everything we've been talking about as far as planning and preparation. We also talked about it's not a question of if, it's when. So Mm -hmm. that proactive, that planning is so important. Even just education of employees in addition to your tools. It it is so, so important, especially the early detection. That That is key to minimizing or reducing the impact of an incident, it's so important to identify it as quickly as possible so then you can execute your plan and respond. So here's another question, maybe it's something that organizations don't really think about too much, but how does an incident commander think about the welfare and the and the different areas that, that their employees are dealing with during such a tumultuous time that could cause terrible anxiety and stress and people are working crazy hours and they're just not sure what to do. Sometimes they freeze or sometimes they're anxious or there's all sorts of areas, the mental health of them. What does an incident uh, commander do for that? That's a great question because you really need to understand that the demands on your team during an incident are are almost unmeasurable. I always say during these incidents, especially in ransomware incidents, that there's people that you wish you could clone. I know there's people that wish you could clone themselves. Uh, Maybe some people wish they even had a time machine to travel anywhere but where they were currently at that time. And and as mentioned, there's so many work streams and of course the desire is for all of them to be completed right away and, and that's not possible. And as I said, that doesn't mean the tasks aren't being worked on simultaneously, quite the opposite. So the incident commander is going to ensure the right amount of resources are being utilized at the right time. So that's as far as using utilizing your resources. But this is another one that's really tough for everyone to understand. I I call it crew rest. Back to your point, your people can't work 20 hours a day for very long. They'll get burnt out, they'll get sick or or worse quit. So, So managing the stress and welfare of your people during a cyber incident is so important. Now this includes for planning for long days, managing teams across different locations and time zones. And again, keeping everybody focused. So another aspect for the incident commander is to recognize when team members may be reaching their breaking point. Now, the incident commander isn't going to have intimate knowledge of your personnel, but we do have experience to identify the stressors of personnel during major cyber incidents and, and taking care of your people during an incident is critical to the success of the investigation and the recovery. Sure. I think even on top of that, organizations, they have to deal with, look, they're, you're only as strong as the people within your organization. And when it comes down to it, you know, it's said in the cybersecurity world, the weakest link is the human. And if you turn it around and make them part of the solution, you show that you care about them, you value them, you have the 360 feedback, you get information from them, you make them part of the cyber culture within the organization, you'll have not only retaining your personnel, which is a big deal in the cybersecurity world, but also people who feel valued, feel attached to something who will respond better and work better. So Kevin, you've guided organizations through all kinds of incident responses. And a lot of organizations would say, you know what, we don't need an incident response commander. We have personnel that we could designate if we need them at that time. So what can you say to organizations who have that mindset? What are the benefits of having an appointed incident command responder? So I I think the benefits as we've talked, the chaos, as I said, is is undescribable, grabable. So many moving parts. And of course, the focus is to focus on one part of your business that you want to get up and running. It, and we talk about it in response that smooth is fast. And, and what I mean by that is if you have a coordinated, organi- organized response, that's going to be much better than just trying to throw as many assets as you can and kind of go searching around randomly. So it is a coordinated response that really gets your personnel and the secure works personnel to kind of work in that team mentality. And that's really what's so, so important. You know, it, it's 
It's really important for the SecureWorks team and your team to work hand in hand during investigation and recovery. And we've talked today about planning and things like that. And if you're not working in a coordinated effort, and when I say team, as I mentioned, I mean SecureWorks team and your team, it can severely impact not only the recovery, but the success of your recovery as well. Exactly. And we've had situations where we've had CISO say comments such as our stress melted away as soon as the incident commander came in. And because that's because it's so critical. And I think this kind of ties into your question that when that chaos starts during the first 24 hours of a cyber incident, that everyone can kind of take a step back have the task prioritized and everybody understands their role for the battle they're about to engage in. And, and for those of you who haven't experienced a major cyber incident, I, I can't describe how crucial it is to have an incident commander to coordinate those efforts, especially from the beginning. And for anyone that's experienced a ransomware incident, I, I think you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Sure, sure. And to even think about it from an outsider coming in and being able to have that depressurize system with a clear head to get the job done. I think that adds a lot as well. Absolutely. And are there any other pointers you'd like to share with our audience really about this very crucial topic as something that we're all facing today? And again, it's not if somebody's going to be cyber breached, it's when. So we've talked about a lot today, a couple of things, preparation and early detection. Um, those are the keys to success. But when you have that preparation, that early detection, you need to ensure that you are you have a plan. As, as I said from the start of this, you can't stop everything, but you can have a plan. So to know that you have a team that can come in and assist that, you know that everybody's tasks are gonna be prioritized and every incident is different. There's, there's no doubt about that, but there definitely is a proven methodology of getting organized, planning and, and executing that plan really assist in the recovery and the speedy, speed of it. Well, very well said. And I think our audience could really learn a lot from you that not just you're talking about a knowledge-based thing, but talking from experience and someone who's been there with such an extensive background, such as yourself. So thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with our audience. And I look forward to our next episode together. So do I. Thank you very much. Thank you.